Hello, and welcome to Grading God's Sight, the podcast that explores underrated heroes. We're so glad you've joined us for this episode entitled Polycarp, 86 Years. Please be sure to subscribe and visit our website at thegreatpodcast.org. That's thegreatpodcast.org. Thanks for listening. A radiant Mediterranean sun pierced the sky with its unforgiving beams as an elderly man stepped onto the sandy floor of a Roman stadium. A pyre of wood awaited him. Powerful government officials and a jeering crowd declared him to be an enemy of the state, worthy of death. The proconsul continued his interrogation. Swear and I will release you, revile Christ. Patiently but firmly, the accused replied, Four score and six years have I been serving him, and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? The year was AD 155. The aged disciple, Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna. By 155, none of the apostles who directly interacted with Jesus were alive. A second generation of apostles, however, bravely carried the gospel torch. Polycarp stood at the forefront of this new cohort. Uniquely positioned in the chronology of the church, his early life had overlapped with the ministries of Jesus' disciples. We can imagine him receiving and perhaps sending letters to Paul and John. Paul even seems to have started the church in Smyrna. At any rate, their writings firmly established his footing on Jesus' teachings, teachings he followed closely. It is important to note that Polycarp did not set out with his own account of Jesus' teachings, but rather instructed believers to look to the writings of first-generation disciples and the commands of Jesus himself. He believed that they provided a clear and thorough account of the gospel and merely sought to echo them. In humility, he considered their writings. For neither I nor another like me is able to follow after the wisdom of the blessed and glorious Paul, who, when he was with you in the presence of the people at that time, he taught the word of truth accurately and reliably. Polycarp considered himself as he was, a mortal man attempting to tell others about the immortal God. This was his duty as Bishop of Smyrna. In this role of overseer, he primarily focused on the local family of believers, but also wrote to the Church of Philippi. This letter is the only writing of Polycarp still in existence. It provides a valuable glimpse into his world. As stated earlier, his teachings reflected those of earlier disciples. Polycarp cites Peter's writings 10 times and Paul's writings 18 times. For such a short work, this is considerable. Polycarp's letter consists of only 14 paragraphs. The letter targets three main issues, the love of money, purity, and the influence of the crowd. He identifies the love of money as the beginning of all difficulty. Due to an existing situation, this topic proved to be quite important, and he wished to make it known. An individual named Valens in the Church of Philippi fell out of communion with the church body due to his monetary pursuits. Details regarding the situation are minimal, but Polycarp was clear. I am deeply sorry for him and for his wife. Do not regard such people as enemies, but call them back as fallible and straying members. Polycarp wished to fully expose the problem without writing off the family involved. As a second point of interest, Polycarp chose purity. He asserted, Likewise also, the younger men above all being concerned about purity and holding themselves in check from all evil. For it is good to abstain from sinful passions in the world, because all sinful passion wages war against the spirit. In naming this problem, he echoes 1 Peter 2.11 and Galatians 5.17, both of which refer to the war between the carnal nature and the spiritual nature. From his experienced walk with God and knowledge of Scripture, he knew the importance of sexual purity in the Christian's journey. As the third primary issue of interest, 
Polycarp points to the difference between the church and the world. He urges, serve God in reverence and truth, leaving behind empty, fruitless talk and the deception of the crowd. His intent is not for Christians to live solitary lives, but to resist becoming like those around them. Elsewhere, he cites idle speculation and false teachings as serious dangers to the Philippian church. The influence of Greek philosophy challenged the faith required of the gospel. Essentially, Polycarp encouraged the Philippians to let their light shine in spite of cultural opposition and pitfalls. Persecution of the early church fluctuated between generations and provinces, but always straddled the horizon. The details that set off Polycarp's accusation and trial on that fateful day in AD 155 are not precisely known. Being an influential leader with connections to the original disciples placed a larger target on him than on many other Christians. While exact details are not known, one issue remains clear. Polycarp's alleged crime was atheism. While it may seem strange to us, Roman officials regarded Christians as godless due to the fact that they refused to worship the emperor. Augustus Caesar set the standard of deity nearly two centuries prior when he asserted that Halley's Comet represented his deceased predecessor. Emperors that followed used this foundation as a means to strengthen national unity. Toleration of new religions hinged upon this one issue, recognition of the emperor as a god. At his trial, Polycarp was challenged to denounce the Christians as atheists, but he reversed the official's words. Then Polycarp, with solemn countenance, looked upon the whole multitude in the stadium and waved his hand to them, and he said, Away with the atheists! One man, regardless of his earthly power, could not rightfully claim to be God. Polycarp's persistence eventually ended the dialogue. Nevertheless, the resolute man of experience being led to the stake had one more surprise awaiting his accusers. According to the account given by Eusebius, Polycarp appeared completely unharmed by the flames, much like the three young Hebrews of old. An astonished executioner was finally ordered to end the disciple's life with a sword. While we may learn many things from Polycarp's life and death, one item remains paramount, his dedication to the practice and teaching of Jesus' commands. This enabled him to stand before his accusers unafraid. We too will have courage through trials when we build our characters on Jesus' teachings. Thank you for listening to Great in God's Sight, a podcast by GYC Southeast. We hope you have enjoyed this adventure through time and pray it serves to deepen your relationship with God. Each episode aims to draw insight from the life of one individual. While we strive to bring you a unique perspective on each believer, we encourage you to use your God-given curiosity to explore these topics for yourself. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and share this episode with your friends via text or social media. You never know who might be encouraged. Until next time, we wish you God's blessing as you seek to be great in His sight too.